Thanks as normal for talking to Frank Warren TV and letting us into your city boxer gym. You're looking quite relaxed there. Is that relaxed or is that knackered? What is it? It's a bit of both. It's a bit of both. Um, arms are hurting me a little bit. You know, we've got a big fight coming up, so a, l a little bit of both. Tired and, uh, and, and relaxed at the same time. Let's talk about your arms. What's your man Anthony Small been doing to you? Uh, well, you know, um, and Anthony Smalls is he's a workaholic. Everyone knows this anyway. You know, he's a workaholic, so he's just been putting me through my paces. And the thing with Anthony, he's very, very consistent where he'll, he, he just works. You've got to tell him days, like, even up in a contender fight and that, like, he'll want to do stuff. And because he's still young, so certain things... Like they just want to get on with and, and just go and do it. But he, he's a workaholic, so sometimes we've got to tell him to cut down his work because he's a workaholic and he wants it that much. You mentioned there that he's still young. Does that mean that you're getting on in age a little bit because he's catching you with a few punches there, isn't he? How's your arm? <laughs> yeah. Um, earlier today when Dean Powell was in, and he just sparred, and unfortunately we only got two rounds of sparring because uh, he just got the better of his sparring partner. But, you know, that's, there's no shame in that for his sparring partner. We're going to call his name. <clears throat> but, so... I had him on the pads, he threw a couple uppercuts, but you could feel the power and it's like kind of shuddered through through the elbow. So it's kind of hurting a little bit, but no big no, no big thing. A little bit of neurofin, a little bit, I believe, and it should be back to normal. Let's talk about his sparring partners. I mean, it's, it's difficult, isn't it? I mean, you've mentioned it before, and both of you have both said before, it's very hard to get the quality that you need to get him where he needs to get. And uh, today, and even a few weeks ago, it's just been no difference with just Anthony's just too quick for them. What happened to his sparring partner a couple of weeks ago? How do you get this knowledge? You see, the, <laughs> Connie's a bomb reporter, very good report. Um, yeah, he, he, he sparred with uh, a sparring partner um, last week, who was meant to be fighting on the show in July. I ain't gonna call his name neither, and he, he he broke his rib. We just got a phone call in. Look, and he can't be doing blah 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 anymore because he broke blah blah blah's rib. So I'm saying, well, it's it's one of those things. You know, what I mean, this is this is a guy who, who, who tough guy, and but he broke his rib, so. We're going out to America on the 23rd, and when we're going out to America, we've got some good sparring lined up out there, because if we're over here, you know, a lot of ego gets into the box. is such an egotistical, egotistical driven sport, where it's all about, oh, well, who's got the best dish, blah, blah, blah. Spa sometimes, it's like um, people's ego surpasses their personality, where you're just meant to go inspiring. Hey, we sent you down to James Cook two days, that's another thing, but we're back here now. We're trying to work and, and, and sort out where we want it. Briefly, you know, just going back to the fact that you're going to have to go and get some good leading up to the July show Bradley Prize for. Let's look back just a little bit. The Canaries, where he had a very tough fight. End of that fight, the minute what he learned, what did you just corner from? That call on like, do you see the clock? My brothers, seeing a fight or just at the time, watching it, when, when you're there, you, you try not to be um, so biased. So you try and see also, like, when you're in a corner, you try and see the good, what the other guy's doing. So, because I know if I was watching it at home, I'd put, ah, and he's winning his hand down. But when you're there, you've got to be um, uh, more critical. And you're saying, well, oh, well, that round looked a little bit close. And because there's a lot of passion going in there, we know how much it means. And, and especially when you've got such a young person on your hands. I'm a young guy myself. So you've got such a young person on your, on your side. You don't want things to go wrong for him. So being there, I learned so much. That, that to me, that was like, if anyone could take me and shake me, do you know what I mean? It's not about the bling, it's not about the flash cars, it's not about none of those kind of things. Just get, on, get down to like good hard work. Good hard work and, and that's it. That's, do you know what I mean? Because he's got the skills to pay the bills and he's got the heart to pay the part because he showed that in the last round where he, he just gutted it out. Mm. And a lot of guys would not have come back from that. So that's out of the way now. I learned a hell of a lot. Me and Water Wright are very good friends now and he's trained. We keep him in contact on the phone. So big up Water Wright if he ever goes on to the... To the uh, but we'll fight you when you get a belt, if you get a belt. Or if you don't, then you can stay where you are. <laughs> you, you, so you'd say that since that experience, your training with that has become a lot more intense, you say a lot more serious? Um, more, more definitely, because, you know what I mean? We've had the, you know what I mean? At, at first, it's like, come on, I just, I just walked into the game. And looked at the game and then like, uh, and then to have good guys behind me like, like John Matty and Mark Burford from the City Boxer Group and stuff. And they're, they're my partners now. And then to have these guys around me, in certain, certain times you can be a little bit in awe, like, yeah, this is great or blah, blah, blah. But then at the end of the day, you've got to realise like, and he's got a small show, Spencer, Spencer Ferron show. We can amalgamate the two and then we're fighting to make um, but the basis of our relationship. Do you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, you know of our religion is of Danny Williams, and he, um, we're, we're, we're all Muslims. So I'm saying, first, you've got to love for your brother what you love for yourself. So I can't 
give somebody any form of advice that I wouldn't give to myself. Mm. So if I'm saying to Anthony something, I've got to say, well, I would actually say it to myself if I was in that situation, and that's what I'm trying to do now. You so, I know how close you are, so it was, would have been a, a joint decision almost. What was the thought process between letting Anthony go to... Um what happened was, I phoned James. James has been my old trainer. James trained me for three years um, on, on things. What I'm saying, it's not a case of like anti not listening. He's the type of guy that wants to, he's, let's say he's like a kid in a fast car who likes to run red lights. Mm. He's actually that person. Uh, after the contenders, we drove out to watch the Kawasaki fight and anti Smalls runs <laughs> red lights, all right? <laughs> Literally. So we're, 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 um, we sat down together and he said, well, you know, let's bring somebody else in, 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 in a corner a little bit more experience where he wants to see things so I'm saying hold back no one I, the night when I said I couldn't even sleep my missus was saying what's the matter I could not sleep I told her what happened she said but I think that's good because James Cook he's like a fatherly figure mm -hmm. me and James are very very close so it wasn't like a thing like oh I didn't go where you're going I don't like you there was nothing with that I phoned Frank phoned him. it's a good thing maybe like he can he, he can listen to these other guys and and and, and take on um, other things with why you. didn't it work because any like I said, like to any any smooth, any smooth, any uh, thing to himself, talk to him. But for the parents side, I thought it'd be good to go to work with James for an extent of time, and I thought maybe it will help James Cook, and it helped James Cook for all of 48 hours, and he's, he's back with me because you no, know, the grass is never greener. One thing you did uh, take from James Cook, and we saw it here today, was this footwork. And the viewers on FrankWarren.tv will be seeing it. What were you doing, like you were trying to step on his foot? What being that, and what what, what is it, in, um, gain fighter? Oh no, what it is is because like um, for doing that, it's like it's for him to position, to get cut off in the ring. So as you go to move side to side, James Cook, me, and, me and Richard Williams, um, the former Commonwealth um, light middleweight champion, who's come to spar with Andy on Thursday. Um, me and Richard Williams used to do it all the time because we used to work together. Me and Ted Bambi used to do it together. James used to teach us how to do it. And there was loads of things where I like, had the accumulation of trainers and I picked up little bits from, from all so of these guys. You basically just cut off the ring and Yeah, I tried to cut off the ring and he's got to put himself in a position where he's still on balance, not to, to and, and, and not be off balance. So it's going to help him like, when he's swaying away from the price because we know Bradley Price got very, very high work rate um, for him to like, not be cut. So, and that's a major thing because like with the last fight that we had, we learned so much. Um, there, there, there was so much pluses that come, there's a lot of pluses that come. And then he knows that what he's got to brush up on. And you come in there, you can see the things that we're working on now. But we ain't really shining on camera too tough. Um, we, we like to go and show that on the day when we go. Well, let's talk about July the 14th, Odin uh, Day. I mean, this is a huge, I know you felt like that uh, fight of the contenders with the American was big, but considering there's a belt line here, this is now the biggest test. It's, it's the biggest, it's the biggest. Of uh, the has got the main price, but Bradley Price has been around a little while and now he's rejuvenated because, like, you know, he, he, he was down at light waterweight. I remember him winning in the Continental titles at light waterweight. Then he, he moved out to waterweight, gave him against Ozzy Duran, and uh, he, he boxed really, really well against Ozzy, Ozzy Duran. So it's really nice to see, like, with Bradley Price, because you see, like, in this business there, too much, like I said, it's egotistical. So it'd be easy for me to say to slag off him and then to slag off his camp. Or blah. I've got a lot of love for all of his. I respect um, Enzo Kawasaki so much. Mm. I respect um, Enzo Macanelli. I respect, I, res I respect Bradley Price, Joe Kawasaki. Because every time I see these guys, when I go down there, as me as a London boy, I get so much love from him. So I'm just going to extend this up. But it's a business, and we got to go in there and say we got to go take care of our business. I mean, how are you going to do that? He comes from this end. Enzo Calzaghi school of boxer puncher he's fast they're all fast. know their angles they know their speed and like I guess most boxers but especially down there they're super fit running up mountains down there in Wales what game plan do you bring to the ring that's going to counteract that speed well they see we got a game plan which which I'm I'm not even going to disclose it there's no more talking when I tell you there's no more bling look look I'm in here no watches I ain't got no money in my pockets I ain't even got my car parked outside none, none of those things I don't even want to talk about it I know what we have to I mean, God willing that we can go and implement what we what we go doing. Like we got good, we got this. Got to be a pushover. Looking at it, right? The guy. Do you know how good Ozzy Duran was? Wayne Alexander didn't want to fight Ozzy Duran, and everybody knows that they offered that to Wayne. We have got this fight here, and God willing, we got the O2 thing. Immense, it's immense. I mean, I'm 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 getting a lot of love from Sports Network right now. Um, I get I'm on the phone every day to 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 by Tony, and it's going. He lives ten minutes away from so equal. 
Amazing. Everyone down in the seat box will love Annie. Forget about like, like maybe Annie's been sold a little bit wrong because of course all Bass and a very nice kid, a very humble kid too. Um, that persona, as soon as you get past it, he's a nice kid, you can bop. And then we go do the business on the full team. And I tell Dot TV's behind us 100% and hopefully behind um, Bradley Price. And I can't wait.